Hi, welcome to this episode of Bloodhound Picks, where I am one of your hosts, Craig. I'm Kyle. And I'm Josh. <laughs> and for this screener spotlight segment, we are going to be looking at the reboot slash sequel, how Hollywood Requel. movies do it now. Yeah. Of Wrong Turn, or also known as Wrong Turn the foundation or just foundation <laughs> i think it's just foundation take out just it's just <laughs> it's wrong turn foundation uh, <laughs> so right since josh is the one to have watched it the most recent out of us i will ask if he's willing to give the synopsis <laughs> yeah hang on a second i will um, okay. <laughs> sorry, I have to put my braces in. It's all good. Um, yeah, so the um, the synopsis of this movie, uh, I'm not going to bother looking it up um, <laughs> just because it needs to be told how it is. And this is a movie that is called Wrong Turn, and it starts out like your typical sort of wrong turn movies movies because they all sort of start out the same way uh would start with your annoying as hell hipster douchebag kids uh going I, I, it's they're either in virginia or west virginia i think virginia um, yeah uh, it doesn't yeah, really matter okay. so well i mean because that's yeah. sort of a holdover from the original film okay. you know and of course they're gonna, they're gonna go hiking in in you know this vast wilderness area appalachian trail and, and it's like a month, isn't it? A couple weeks or a month journey or something. It's like a whole. I know the Appalachian Trail is a huge is thing, super but long, yeah. But they're doing the whole thing or something because it it implies that they've been on a trip for a while. Our word. Or are to. they going to do the whole thing? Because stuff's going to happen, Craig. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And so then you know they 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 get out and they start on their journey, and of course, uh weird shit starts happening they start getting killed etc cetera, etc cetera. you're like oh fuck it's gonna be the obviously it's gonna be the uh the inbred mutant fucking monster type villains from the wrong turn franchise no it isn't um and essentially what 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 happens is the the foundation in the the titular foundation um is Basically, uh, they've seen the village too many times and are really <laughs> enamored with it for some reason. And the foundation is just a group of, uh, I guess, a population of, of woods dwellers who are completely antiquated and don't live life in, you know, contemporary current times and... They're they're also uh, I guess murderous and completely stupid. I, I mean, it's just it, it. And so then, essentially, you know, Matthew Modine's daughter is the one, and her friends uh, are held captive, and he's on the you know he's he's basically conducting his own investigation into what happened, and then now we have to get away from the foundation. So. That's essentially it. Don't ever think for a second that you're going to get an actual wrong turn film because you're not. Uh, so, I mean, this will be in our, of course, our review that will be posted on Ginger Nuts of Horror 2. But yeah, for me, I, so it's been strange. I've always, I've had a fascination with the wrong turn franchise is just <laughs> because there's this, I don't know why, there's this huge fan base behind it. And I may have seen like a clip from the first wrong turn, I think in my entire, so there, you know, it's one of those, the same with saw or stuff like that, where well, saw, I understand a little bit more, but there's just like these diehard horror fans just for this franchise. Um, but still I haven't seen them. So I kind of went into this blind with the exception of the knowledge that they're like mutant inbred hillbilly you know, throw in whatever trope for kind of a Texas Chainsaw Hills Have Eyes backwoods horror film. Um, I thought it was interesting having it be, and I kind of wanted to play off of this more, but then 
doesn't know way that there, there's going to be spoilers, obviously, because the film switches up enough that it's not necessarily even a spoiler, but I'm going to give it that the foundation isn't, I mean, they're evil, but they're not evil in the sense of like the original villains from what I know. And that it's the kids or the hip, yeah, the hipster kids as Josh kind of mentioned are the ones to draw first blood in a way are they're the ones that kind of mistake every the what is happening for being attacked so almost like some serious version of i don't know tucker and dale which i'd love to see a uh, a version like that where it's actually the hillbilly folk are the good guys in it but then we don't get that <laughs> so I don't know. I, for me, I think there's little elements here and there. I think, yeah, it kind of leaves a horror realm and becomes almost like a backwoods thriller throughout it. And it, it's kind of like you have three different movies that are sectioned out of the horror, then a thriller, and then a kind of or the occult wicker man. I think a lot of people have considered it. And then kind of this thriller thing. Well, that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same boat. It's just it's i didn't hate it either and like some of the stuff was okay but it's like a textbook of not making a horror movie i don't want to know who the people are that are <laughs> actually not dangerous and actually have a <laughs> cult and actually you killed their guy first and actually they're like detached from society but they're not totally fucking crazy they will kill you but you started it and you characters are kind of <laughs> annoying and it's like yeah, it, it, it maybe would have been okay if it wasn't called Wrong Turn, but obviously they're not going to do yeah. that because that's the whole point of, like, you know, that's their marketing. Otherwise, no one would know the movie exists. But it, 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 it feels, or, I was just going to say, it feels like it was called Foundation because it was the same writer mm -hmm. or whatever. And then they went, oh, well, you also wrote Wrong Turn. How about you just make it a wrong turn movie is it know. does feel yeah i mean that's probably what happened um but honestly yeah what you were describing craig would be kind of awesome if you had just the inverse of a fucking hillbilly horror where we kill these kids that deserve i don't know you know the kids are the shitty villains in a way or something but yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I just think this movie's like going to disappoint the fuck out of all the uh, wrong turn people you just described. And any <laughs> anyone that would like it is going to be like, oh, wrong turn and not see it. So it's like that weird yeah. spot they're in. Yeah. What about you, Josh? I mean, I felt like the I felt like um, the script kind of went in an interesting structural direction just because you know, it was, I think I, I think I clocked it out. So like essentially the first 45 minutes are all the douchey kids in the woods and the weird shit going on. There's obviously people, you know, kind of lurking in the shadows. And, um, I actually thought some of it was kind of creepy. Um, and then at the 45 minute mark, they get captured and, then it completely changes gears and we get the whole, you know, foundation intros and this fucking weird shit that just isn't nearly, wasn't nearly as effective to me as Kyle kind of mentioned, you know, we're getting all this like educational exposition about these fucking people. And it's just like my suspension of disbelief in a wrong turn movie just completely <laughs> went out the fucking window, which is really saying a lot, you know, um, because I just was like, you motherfuckers are really playing this completely straight laced that there's this group of fucking people that live in the fucking woods that, you know, I mean, it was just like, fuck me, man. No. Um, so to me, it kind of just fell apart at that point because I thought I, I did think that, you know, it wasn't anything special, but it worked well enough for the first 45 minutes or so. And, and you know, by keeping everything kind of in the shadows and you don't ever really get to see anything, um, you know, you just have your kind of your already existing knowledge of 
this is a wrong turn movie. Obviously, people are going to get killed. There's going to be a lot of gore, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't, you know, it definitely gives you that. Um, but then, yeah, once it gets to that point, I mean, the 45 minute mark, it just. For me, it didn't work. And that's just partly due to it wasn't nearly as interesting. I didn't fucking care. Yeah. I already yeah. didn't really care about the characters, <laughs> you know, Um and so then you're going to introduce these other characters that I also don't really like. <laughs> yes. So, you know what I mean? It was just like, I, I, I'm not really seeing the point. The runtime was a huge problem yeah. too. Yeah. And how many fucking false endings could you possibly cram in to the last five minutes of the, it's just like, is this a joke? Because yeah. what were there like four false endings <laughs> in five minutes? And I'm like, all right, and then when the credits roll, it's still not fucking over. <laughs> that well, yeah, I agree. Like you didn't need that <laughs> at all. Like you didn't even need the epilogue. Oh. But that last shot, it was a cool thing to to end on or whatever. It's just a cool idea, but you don't need it. Where it's like someone yeah. jumping in that RV and like just letting it play out in a long shot is like that's cool. That doesn't. We don't need to see that. But you know, it reminded me a shit ton of. Um, a movie that was way better, which is the ritual where it felt like yeah. it's trying to do a lot of those things. But like the ritual is like, first of all, just way better and more scary. But you know, like once yeah. they do encounter people that we don't even know if it's a cult or it's never really explained what it is. And that's how much why it's better scary. Yeah. Work? Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> never fucking know what's going on. Yeah. You're just like captured by people that aren't even going to talk to you or don't even speak like English. And if you haven't yet, yeah, definitely yeah. check out The Ritual. It's on Netflix. It was one of my favorite, I think, of the, well, definitely that year, but even the past decade. I love yeah, mm. The Ritual. Um, no, I mean, I would agree with Josh, especially going back to that element of, like, a wrong turn movie, you, from what I know, again, you watch for the gore and the, you know, the body count. And there's certain franchises like that. A lot of times and then the runtime and then um i don't know i think there's this whole thing lately where movies want to go back to the the serious origins like that's the big thing with these sequel whatever seek or what are you call it kyle or requel yeah it's like oh we're gonna go back to when it was really gritty and serious and i don't know especially what we've been watching lately like i'm I'm more willing to watch something that has a little humor to it or tongue in cheek. I don't know. Maybe it's the pandemic, yeah. maybe, but I don't go into a wrong turn movie wanting to see a serious Same. film. Well, the, the, the thing is too, is like even the original film, it still wasn't nearly as fucking straight up played as this yeah. was. And then by the second movie, you have Joe Lynch directing it with Henry Rollins and that fucking chick from MTV. Like, <laughs> You know, it just like immediately went to this. Don't take any of this shit seriously. You know, I mean. Well, well he did like a Texas Chainsaw 2. Or that was his intention, wasn't it? Joe Lynch's. I have no idea. But the fact of the uh, matter is, is, it just it literally got to the point of. This is not meant for you to be like seriously engaged with this movie. Yeah. I'm going to give you just buckets of gore, etc insane kills it's going to be hilarious that you know and that's yeah kind of what the subsequent movies were as well uh i'm not an expert on what are we at like part six at this point but um, well this one is seven i think so this yeah so there you go right, this yeah. one's the foundation yeah so it's zero <laughs> the slate has been wiped clean <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i feel like they also like I guess you could do whatever you wanted with like a sequel to this, but it does feel like to me, it feels like once I know these people's like motivations and that they're really just defending themselves or whatever is like, they're not scary ever again. Like they would be scary in real life if they were coming to kill me, but in a movie in this yeah. reality, you know, it's like, it's not scary to know their yeah. motivations. So like, even if you make a sequel or do whatever, it's like, it's, it's all kind of been ruined. <laughs> Well, that's what happened with um, 
what was it texas chainsaw 3d or whatever where they mm. they almost turn leatherface into a good guy in a weird way spoiler yeah. if anybody hasn't seen but it's old enough now that you whatever. well that was like <laughs> i mean i didn't see the leatherface movie but that's like yeah. my thoughts on it. Just seeing the trailer was like, I don't want to see his origin. Like, I don't know. I don't want to know why he's fucked yeah. up. I don't care. That's not scary at all. Yeah. Yeah. It was scary, though, how much the main foundation guy looked just like Orson Welles. Right. <laughs> I recognize them. I know. Orson Welles was... <laughs> I it was just hilarious for me because I it was so distracting because every time that dude appeared, it was like, why did they get this guy that looks just like Orson <laughs> Welles? I don't get it. He was in um, Hap and Leonard, but he was also in um, oh, yeah. the uh, what the fuck? He was just in another horror movie and I can't remember what it was. I wanted to say the actor Bill Sage, isn't it? Yeah. If I remember right. Yeah, that's what oh, I thought. He was in the Pale Door movie. Yeah. Which was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't watched that one, but I mean, it's on. Shutter I know now, there's a lot so... of. Yeah, I'll get to it. I mean, I like um, Lansdale, which I know he didn't write it. He just kind of it's yeah. presented by <laughs> his uh, son. I think wrote or co-wrote it. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> But, I mean, I guess that's a wrong turn, right? Yeah, that's, that's... wrong turn foundation. <laughs> yes. I just want to keep um, saying foundation. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so join us next time for a screener spotlight where we might, I don't know which one we're supposed to cover next. Uh... Uh, you'll find out when we find out or <laughs> after because we'll be coming up with it. <laughs> all right but thanks for listening bloodhound picks podcast is part of the morbidly beautiful podcast network produced by josh lee craig drum and kyle hints music by raymond seed editing by kyle hints